The, the ACM to me means my aspiration as a professional. Um, I think participating with the ACM and what the ACM means to me is about taking my career as a software engineer seriously. Being in the ACM has been all about my commitment to self-improvement, right? Access to uh, the digital library, access to the publications, understanding what's already been done in the field and what people are doing at the forefronts of the field is incredibly important because the last thing that one wants to do is come up with another solution to a problem that someone has solved and you're unaware of. Uh, the ACM, I think, is, is the collective expression from both software engineers, academics, others in the discipline to better ourselves and to broaden our horizons. I think as a professional, I want to be the best professional I can be. I want the, the professionals that I work with to be the best professionals they can be. And more than anything, ACM speaks to that aspiration. It has taken decades for this to happen, but now it's here. Software engineering will be a licensed profession like electrical, civil, and industrial engineering. As of April 2013, the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying will offer the principles and practice of engineering examination for software engineers. Ten states, including Michigan, Virginia and New York will offer the exam with many states to follow. Will Ohio and Pennsylvania be the next states to offer this exam? How can Ohio and Pennsylvania benefit from offering the exam or will it be another impediment for computer science graduates and current and future practitioners in pursuing a profession in software development? How will state licensing boards determine whether they will offer the exam? And if they do decide to offer the exam, will you be ready or able to take it? Software-related failures have plagued our profession. Failures attributed to software have been noted since the early days of computing, and the damage caused by those failures has ranged from trivial to catastrophic. Computers. We've all come to accept the often frustrating problems that go with them. Bugs, viruses, and software glitches for small prices to pay for the convenience. But in high-tech and high-speed military and space program applications, the smallest problem can be magnified into disaster. There are many examples of software failures that might have been mitigated through proper engineering design, evaluation, and oversight by a professional software engineer. With virtually every technology in existence directly impacted by software engineering, including safety critical systems, the need to establish a credential to demonstrate professional competency seems to be the most logical next step. In 2000, the National Society of Professional Engineers organized a task force to determine if software engineers should be licensed. But in order to implement licensure, an infrastructure had to be in place. That infrastructure began with the Software Engineering Body of Knowledge, SWABOC, which defined the body of knowledge for practitioners after four years of practice. This was approved in 2005. The SWABOC would be used as the foundation for software engineering curricula and the basis for licensing exams. Next is the four-year ABET accredited software engineering programs. The first undergraduate program in the United States was started in 1996 at Rochester Institute of Technology. Since then, there has been a steady growth in the number of programs. There are currently 104 programs that lead to a certificate to a PhD in software engineering with 22 of these programs ABET accredited. In 2007, the Software Engineering Licensure Consortium was created. 
the consortium's goal was to convince at least 10 licensing boards that an exam was necessary. The states targeted were those with high-tech centers and home to ABET accredited software engineering programs. The last step toward licensure was the development of the exam itself. The PE exam for software engineers was developed by the IEEE Computer Society, IEEE USA, and NCEES. The exam is based on the nine knowledge areas of SWABOC. In order to take the exam, if offered in your state, you must comply with the PE model law. In April 2013, NCEES will offer the PE exam. The exam will be administered yearly. It is projected that all states will eventually offer the exam. As an employer looking at a uh, resume on a, sheet, on a table that has, you know, she's got two candidates side by side and one's got a license and one doesn't, uh, the employer automatically knows that the person with the PE has already met a minimum uh, standard of education, experience, and qualifications set by his peers. It's, uh, it takes away one unknown. But should the exam be offered in Ohio and Pennsylvania? Of the 104 universities that offer a software engineering programs, only three universities are in Ohio, none of which are ABET accredited. There are nine universities in Pennsylvania. Of those nine, Drexel, Gannon, and Penn State University, Brennan College, are ABET accredited. The most contentious criticisms of licensing software engineers is comedy, grandfathering, and static bodies of knowledge and exams that do not reflect the most current best practices and technologies. Today we will cover some of these issues with our panel and discuss whether this is the first step in mandating all software engineers to be licensed.